Our top story this week, special counsel Jack Smith asked a federal judge to start former President Donald Trump's trial in D.C. on January 2nd of 2024. The former president faces charges on trying to overturn the 2020 election. And when most people face trial, many lawyers ask their clients not talk about the case. But for Trump, will he remain quiet? Well, our Ben Dennis speaks with Jesse Burns, a senior editor with their media partners at The Hill. Jesse, again, thank you for joining us. The former president was in court last week, and it seems like there could be a possible date set for next year for the trial. And he spoke after playing golf at the Live Golf Tournament, saying that the trial should be after the election. Could we see that happen? Well, absolutely. We saw the Trump team, you know, making the case that they need as much time as possible. You know, as it looks right now, uh, they are floating early January for the trial to start in the 2020 election interference case and May uh, 20th for the uh, classified documents case. Of course, uh, those could both extend right now. They're coming towards the end of the uh, calendar, at least for the classified documents case, towards the end of the calendar uh, in terms of the GOP primary. And what the Trump lawyers are essentially trying to do uh, in both of these cases and others is, you know, the strategy has been delay, delay, delay. Um, and it's in their interest to push these out as far as possible. You know, former President Trump weighing in, lashing out uh, at the early January proposal for the 2020 uh, election for, uh, uh, case. And right now, you know, as it stands, uh, they're trying to push out discovery. They're trying to push out as much as they can um, so that they get closer to the 2020 election or even after the 2020 election. Uh, but there's going to be stiff resistance, of course, from the Department of Justice. And the former president continues to remain outspoken on a social media platform, Truth Social. What do you think his lawyers are saying to him right now? Well, we know that one of the former lawyers on Trump's team, you know, has publicly called for him to essentially uh, stop talking about these cases. Uh, you know, the interesting thing going on right now in playing out at the D.C. courthouse uh, just blocks away from the Capitol uh, where Trump, you know, is accused of inciting this riot. Uh, the Trump team is making the case that the Department of Justice um, should uh, essentially not have this protective order that would prevent Trump from disclosing information gleaned during discovery. Of course, the judge in this case uh, a ruling in, in Trump's favor, but essentially saying that uh, if there are items that are marked sensitive on the part of the Department of Justice, Trump should not disclose those. Uh, but essentially, the, the, the case that the Trump lawyers are making is that he is a former president. He has First Amendment uh, rights and privileges that he should not uh, have curtailed uh, at the same time the Department of Justice trying to make the case that some of these you know, materials are sensitive and in the classified documents case uh, are classified and should not be re released publicly. And notably for some context here, the former president said on Truth Social, if you come after me, I'm coming after you. I want to turn uh, to uh, one additional question about the upcoming debate in Milwaukee. Uh, most GOP candidates are preparing, but Trump says that he won't sign the loyalty pledge to support whomever is the nominee. What are the chances, though, of Trump showing up at that debate? Well, it's unclear right now. Of course, we've seen several you know, rivals, Mike Pence, uh, Tim Scott, uh, others who have come out and you know signed or is signaled that they want to be on that debate stage. Uh, former President Trump signaling he's going to skip it. Um, at the same time, uh, whether he's there or not, he will be the main topic of discussion. He leads in the polls uh, by double digits. No one is coming close. The only person that comes near him is Ron DeSantis, uh, who will be on the debate stage. And so, um, you know, it's it's a very tricky situation for these GOP hopefuls. They're trying to get attention. They're trying to get out uh, from under this cloud of Trump, uh, especially with all these legal cases keeping him in the news. Uh, and so we'll see, you know, which candidates uh, might have a little bit of some of a breakthrough moment there on the debate stage in Milwaukee. And quickly, while we have a little bit of time left, Jesse, what does the former president have to lose politically if he doesn't show up? Well, it certainly opens him up to uh, other candidates having, you know, a moment in the spotlight. You know, we've seen Chris Christie, we've seen, uh, you know, Tim Scott uh, recently uh, gaining some uh, momentum in polls. And so, you know, he the worst case scenario for Trump is for another candidate to really kind of steal the show uh, and to have a great moment. Of course, it's uh, large, you know, this is just the first debate. The second debate is going to be coming just weeks later uh, in California. And so, you know, Trump can uh, make the appearance there. Um, but really, you know, he wants to maintain um, that kind of dominant force. And if he's not there and someone else is seen as uh, kind of dominating uh, or getting, you know, stealing the show, so to speak, um, 
that is not in his interest. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us.